All right. Tuning tool, trouble codes, auto cal options, display licenses, low power mode, self tests. What's that? Oh, back. Auto cow options. Edit settings. Set pro menu. File. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not familiar with any of this stuff. AR speed. All right. That sounds interesting. All right. I don't know how to go back. There we go. Trouble codes. Error. Alright, so there's tuning. You can read your tune, program cal, program full, read GPM injector. Alright, so injector stuff, switch tunes, tune options, coming soon. And that's that. So you can do scan tool or tuning tool. Scan tool, select PIDs, please wait. Record data. No. So I guess you can read codes with it. It's a pretty expensive a thousand dollar code reader. But yeah, I'm not sure how to get tunes off of them. I don't think you're able to. It's uh, pretty interesting. I looked it up online. I actually need the EFI Live program. So it looks like with this program here, I can read my tune files, and then the program behind it, I can use it to actually scan tunes and actually implement tunes and modify them and stuff. Here's when I unlocked the ECM and installed the tune. It was about 10 in the morning, and it was back in June 14, 2017. So that sounds about right. I got the RAM back in May. I'm actually going to drag my tune files and save them anyway. You know, just in case. It's always cool to have as well and be able to read them, look at them in the future. Small picture of my computer and the RAM. And, well, I don't see an option to be able to modify it. I need a license or something there. Of course, they want to keep it locked out. They don't want you to be able to read or modify their tune files because they sell them. Well, it was cool nonetheless to be able to see everything here and future vehicle modifications are coming soon. Found something pretty interesting here with the tuner and that is switching tunes. Of course, most people get the the switch on the fly switch on when they can switch one to five in their truck but or you can do it manually and that is through your tuner. So if you go to here, switch tunes, you can either pick from stock, tow, street slash economy, hot street, and race which is the highest tune. I think this is 150 and 150 more horsepower. I think stock is 20 horsepower and all the other ones are in the middle but yeah you're able to switch from your tune. You don't necessarily need the switch. I never installed one. I think this is probably the most interesting part about the tuner itself. About to head outside here but I just wanted to show you this Ford thing I got from the garage. It's a folder. Mike gave it to me whenever we went to the diesel vent and I'm probably going to give these badges away. Silverado and Lawrence, but anyways, let's open this up and I read something interesting I just read through all this real quick and what I saw here Is that it says aftermarket products typically not tested and approved by the EPA like Ford engineer products as a result the use of aftermarket products creates a risk for installers and consumers including the following violation of emissions and anti-tampering laws Tampering is defined as removing, disconnecting, damaging, or any rendering ineffective any emissions control device or element of design that has been installed on a motor vehicle or motor vehicle engine or having someone else do it for you. And if you read down here, federal fines up to $37,500 per vehicle and state fines up to $25,000 per vehicle may both apply. So both of those. So you're talking, um, I mean, almost... You're talking almost seventy thousand dollars right there in fines, just for doing that to your vehicle. So that's pretty crazy, man. And this is including the EGR, EG, as you can see, EGR coolers and EGR delete kits, risks of using those, and you void your warranty, obviously. But it says the Federal U.S. Clean Air Act 
42 U.S.C. Section 7522 prohibits tampering with the motor vehicle's emission controls. So yeah, man. Pretty crazy stuff. All right, guys, in the garage now, and when it comes to other diesel-related items that I have here, I'm gonna start off with this box. We got a heater hose, got a cooler holder right here, and then here we go, we got an EGR cooler. And this cools the exhaust gases before dumping it back into the engine, which is just very stupid. They should honestly find a better way to do it instead of doing it this method. But yeah, this thing's pretty heavy and dirty as well but that is that right there it's kind of hold it kind of holds on to, to it like that as well so i don't know if i can get that back in i guess i'll do for now so over here we got what's left of the delete kit it's really not much left in here i have the throttle valve delete box as well and they, they shoved it in the box and crushed this one that's how i did that exactly how it came so yeah we just have some things holding the bracket down I never used that's it it says EGR cooler and throttle valve delete kit fits 10 to 14 Dodge Ram 6.7 Cummins diesel so that's that over here we got some Silverado lettering I think this was from the grill guard to the Ram and Silverado balls another other miscellaneous things that I took off the truck. We got license plate bulbs, O-rings, a zip tie. That's that. So over here we've got coolant tubes, crankcase vent tubes. Got those right there, hoses, whatever you want to call them. And then right here I have the throttle valve, which you can see there's a little valve in there. Opens and closes, lets the exhaust gases into the intake of the truck, which is, uh, like I said, really dumb. And that's that. Let me close that box there. So last box right here. We got the, I think uh, this is exhaust gases flow through this too. Pretty sure, as you can see it's pretty dark and sooty in there. I just smelled it, I think that's diesel. So we got uh, EGR components, very dirty heavy stuff. And yeah, this sits on top of the engine. Yeah, this, so this is all top of the e, all top of the engine at EGR stuff as well. But that's that. And there we go with some moving around and combining parts and stuff. I was able to fit actually all that stuff into one big box in multiple boxes. A lot of stuff's just down there. I got rid of that lid, which ironically 